some fireworks in uh, Congress yesterday as Fed Chief Jerome Powell came before the Senate to make a case, uh, among other things, that he should serve another term at the Fed. Um, there, remember early on, a couple early on when Janet Yellen's term, Treasury Secretary, people were asking, you know, hey, should Jerome Powell like have another term? You're good friends with him. And she say, hey, it's not really up to me. It's up to Congress. And she really didn't want to talk about it. Why? Well, because he's a conservative and he leads a Republican-led, conservative-led Federal Reserve, you know, that was put in place by Trump, basically. So you have this Federal Reserve that has been very favorable to big banks. Upwards of $120 billion a month in federal bailout money is going to these big banks. Very little regulation. We've rolled back regulation at these big banks. Do you find it funny that they're saying that it's like very Republican leaning where, you know, if you look at even during Obama when they bailed out the banks, like has it ever not been in favor of banks? Right, right. No, it's always been that way, right? It's an extension of the liquidity market. It's an extension of the of that market. Most of these guys come from that world. They all come from private equity. They come from, you know, the big banks. It's like it's like these Wall jobs. Street's it's Wall Street's version of mom's purse. <laughs> right. Yeah. By the way, mom's purse growing up, she had a little cho- uh, change dish that she had on the the countertop by the windowsill. That's where I used to get some uh, coins to go to the pool and buy a buy a cheeseburger. So, mommy mommy's change change uh, change dish was really good. Yeah, my grandmother had a big uh, Coca-Cola bottle that had was full of quarters. So we'd just go grab, you know, a couple handful of quarters and off we'd go. Right. And she Thank you, knew. Mom's James Purse. Yeah. What, once every 10 years when you'd count them and take them to the bank. That was the worst. Oh, my God. Like, once every 10 years, my mom, you know, they'd be like, all right, it's c- coin day. And we just put f- tons of pennies on the floor with those little roller things. Oh my! But you had to, you know, stuff them in there, and your fingers were covered <laughs> yeah. in dirt from like all the roller paper that you had to. What a scam that was! My my grandmother used to get so angry because, like, if we were in her pennies, because she had wheat pennies in there, and she would be so mad if we took her wheat pennies. Were they worth anything, or it was just like a? They're like worth was, three cents versus <laughs> one cent. <laughs> By the way, it's hilarious because the one cent pennies aren't even worth one. I mean, they're actually they cost more to make than they're even worth. Do they still make them? Yeah, they still make pennies, but there's oh. like no copper in them anymore. It's like an alloy and they're, they they cost more to make. You know, there's no copper. It's amazing. Like we're like, these are copper pennies, Abe Lincoln, and they're not. <laughs> they're like tin and I don't know. Well, no, who, know, who the hell else knows? What's I don't like admitting this, uh, but I used to like if I had like three or four pennies in my pocket when I was pulling out my change, I'd just toss them on the ground. <laughs> really? Yeah. See, that's like money to you. You're just like, you know, m- money bags, money bags foster over there. Like, hey. <laughs> pennies. pennies, pennies, such a pain. So anyway, uh, this was yesterday at the Federal Reserve, you know, and, and Jerome Powell was there making the case, I guess, that he should have another term. Uh, and also he was talking about the state of the economy. He was talking about Fed bailouts. He was talking about tapering. Uh, But he didn't have a very favorable audience in front of uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren. Let's watch Senator Elizabeth Warren take him to task, calling him the most dangerous man in America. Renominating you means gambling that for the next five years, a Republican majority at the Federal Reserve with a Republican chair who has regularly voted to deregulate Wall Street won't drive this economy over a financial cliff again. And with so many qualified candidates for this job, I just don't think that's a risk worth taking. Your record gives me grave concern. Over and over, you have acted to make our banking system less safe, and that makes you a dangerous man to head up the Fed, and it's why I will oppose your renomination. Wow. I, by the way, I will say... She's got a lot of chutzpah, you know, like I, that would be very difficult for me, I think, to be able to sit there and just say and, and be able to look, stare down someone like that and be like, you know, I think you're very dangerous. I think you've been in cahoots with the big banks, funneling money to these big banks, lowering regulation. These big banks have been walking all over Americans. Uh, I think you're a dangerous man and I'm not just I'm not going to vote to have you have that job anymore. I, that's a hard thing to do. Like, good. I mean, I will say good for her, you know, I mean. But she also, though, in, in, in his defense, didn't really put up any 
alternative, you know, what is the alternative here for the Fed? Like one of the other things that we probably should really look at is eliminating the Fed, you know, getting rid of the Fed. And a Band-Aid solution is to what? Put someone in there who kind of puts the screws to big banks a little bit. I mean, what, what really is the Fed going to do? They're autonomous. I mean, they are run independently. They're not elected. They can do whatever they want. Well, you remember, remember pre like in the 70s and stuff, you heard more about the Treasury than the Fed. You hardly ever heard about the Fed. You know, it was like all the Treasury. And then all of a sudden, it's like it flipped and you never even hear the Treasury anymore. There's no talking about getting money from the Treasury from Congress. It's all from the Fed now. They've grown so powerful. They've grown incredibly powerful. I mean, and that's, you know, unfortunately, that's Wall Street. That's, and they're really just a portion of Wall Street. They work in lockstep with Wall Street. And I'm going to show you some data. You know, this came up yesterday, really f unbelievable. Um, and you look at, if you, if, you, if you think for a moment, oh, they're not in cahoots with Wall Street. They don't really have any kind of relationship with Wall Street. Well, we have new documents that were just released the last week. And this came up yesterday that revealed that Dallas Fed president, Robert Kaplan, and among others, made multiple trades, stock trades, worth millions of dollars in the last year, including individual stocks like Apple, Amazon, Delta Airlines, Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin, a former senior executive at a consulting firm McKinsey and Company, disclosed several financial holdings in excess of a million dollars. His stakes included Coca-Cola stock worth more than $500,000. Barkin's largest holdings worth one million or more include all kinds of exchange traded funds, mutual funds. He had, for example, holdings worth at least $1 million in Vanguard's energy fund. Admiral Share is a mutual fund that invests in energy companies, including ConocoPhillips, Marathon Petroleum, BP. And then you have Boston Fed President Eric, Eric, uh, Eric Rosengren. He held stakes in four real estate investment trusts, several purchases and sales of similar property according uh, owning vehicles, according to filings. Guess what? He also held stock in Pfizer, Chevron, AT&T. His investments were in the tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars. The Fed, these documents well, reveal. It's, I mean, it's not like he's an elected, elected official, so we have, there's no oversight over his, what he does with his money, right? I guess, right? I mean, so now they're like, some of them are stepping down. Uh, Kaplan stepping down saying, you know, well, I just, I don't like the sort of onerous rules that are involved here, you know? And Fed Chief Jerome Powell yesterday testifying, saying basically, uh, yeah, we're, we're looking into it. We're going to look into it. I mean, do any of you doubt for a second that these guys are, are, you know, making money hand over fist, abusing their office in a way? overseeing the exact so they're pumping money to these companies right they're overseeing making sure that wall street these big companies get millions of dollars in uh, bailouts and they're investing in those companies and they stand to profit from those companies that the very ones that they are funneling money to who is the fed who are the fed why are they allowed to run with such uh you know omnipotent power well, and you think about it, that, that makes perfect sense why it's not dealt with with the Treasury anymore, because that we would see like they can't hide what happens at the Treasury from us because that's public information. The right. Fed being a private bank, they've not been audited. They do everything in the dark of night, uh, completely non-transparent. Like we have no idea what they what they're even holding. Uh, they, they've uh, supposedly spent trillions or lost trillions of dollars uh, dealing with Iraq stuff like there's money that's just come up like our money still goes there but it's completely private and hidden from us. Yeah. Yeah, it's all in the dark because they're not elected officials. And so now you have the, one of the two Fed officials announced sudden retirement. Sudden retirement amid controversy over ethics and stock trading. Boston Fed President Eric, and Ro Eric Rosengren and Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan both announced their departures on Monday. What amazing timing, huh? They're gonna leave the posts over scrutiny of their stock trading activities. Rosengren basically said, oh, it's, it's my health. You know, I just want to, I'm just not, I'm, I'm going to take some time because I'm not feeling healthy. I'm not feeling healthy. 
I wouldn't feel healthy either if suddenly I had the scrutiny on me. But unfortunately, there's nothing illegal, really. I mean, there's nothing that's going to happen to them. Yeah. What I mean, if they they invested their private money, what like what would it matter? They're they're not a government elected official, so what does it matter? At the end so of the they, day, they know that they can funnel millions of dollars to these companies, and at the same time, make stock investments in these companies that will benefit. Like they know that Pfizer is going to be taken care of and propped up, so they invest in Pfizer. Th think about this: they basically are handed they're handed our money, right? The our our money with zero oversight, zero. That's literally like me saying, okay, I have $1,000 um, and I wanna invest it in something. And this guy's like, oh, just give it to me. You know, I'll, I'll, right. I'll do good with it. And then they you it give happen. it to him and it's gone. It's just gone. Yeah, I'll make it happen. I'll take care of it for you. You know, I'll, I'll put it up there. I happen to know that some of these companies are gonna be receiving all sorts of money from the federal government. So that's probably a good investment. And what's wrong with that other than just like, hey, this looks bad. I saw over and over in these pieces I read on this today, multiple pieces from the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, et cetera. It's just, it's what they claim is that it's a bad public perception. It's a bad public perception. It's, it's only a bad public perception when they get caught though. <laughs> right. Yeah. So they only get, it's, it's only a problem if they get caught. That's it. Right, because this. How long that, you think this is done anything wrong? Yeah, and how long you, this stuff's been going on? There's no way this is the first. Like, oh well, this is the first time anybody at the Fed's ever done anything like this. Yeah, this is new. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally new. This hasn't happened before. Oh my god! Thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com/join, where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire-backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.